He's the man behind many of the pop culture moments we're still talking about. From movies to sports to music, it sure seems like Peter Goober's got his hands on all aspects of entertainment. If that's not an impressive enough resume, he's also a best-selling author. I'm TJ Manotok, and today we're talking to Peter Goober about the importance of telling stories, his entry into the world of sports, and we find out what he thinks are the keys to success. Peter, in, in your book, Tell the Win, you talk about this concept of a purposeful story. You know, some people you know, find that such a different you know, combination of words to begin with, a purposeful story, and how storytelling is important to you. Can you elaborate on how instrumental this has been for you in your career and in bringing you to where you are today in your life? A purposeful story is that a story that has a purpose. What are you trying to communicate? What are you asking your audience you're listening to, to do, mm -hmm. to think, to feel. What result do you want? It's result oriented. So what you're trying to do is take information that's often soulless, mm -hmm. facts, data that are critical for support of your position, and trying to present them in a way that's purposeful. Mm -hmm. Purposeful so that it's memorable, yeah. resonant, and actionable. Mm -hmm. You want one person or many people to do a particular thing. Mm -hmm. So you have to organize it around that intention. The narrative helps give the audience, your listener, attention, mm -hmm. and the content creates the intention. So that is emotional transportation. Mm -hmm. You're actually asking the person to do something. You have, want a result. And that's true whether it's one person you're talking to mm -hmm. or a whole constituency of voters, mm -hmm. whoever you are, or customers. And so you're, you're at, it's your attitude that puts your aptitude on steroids. It allows it to be powerful. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, if you're not intentional in doing it, mm -hmm. it'll just be psychobabble. Right, right. Let's break it down a bit, um, if you can, what, uh, what makes up a purposeful story. And, does it, and, and when you do that, does it put pressure on you as a storyteller to put structure rather than just being natural and letting it flow naturally? Well, I think we're all natural storytellers. We're all wired that way. Yeah. No, nobody is wired in a different way. We abandon it uh, in, in, for the efficiency of information or data, but mm -hmm. we're not digital people. Mm -hmm. We're analog. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking for what's the meaning of the information, not just yeah. what the information is. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand your audience. Your audience, and if you look at them as audience rather than as customers, you'll be able to get more likely to get a relationship with them. You're more likely to get them to behave in a way mm -hmm. that's concomitant with what your desire is. Yeah. So you have to organize yourself around that intention because if you don't know what the main thing is mm -hmm. and you're not able to keep the main thing the main thing, they're never going to take it, they're never going to run with it, they're never going to own it. Yeah. And your job as a storyteller is to get them to own the story mm -hmm. and to have that information and data and facts inside power their retelling of the story or their action. Right. So you have to plan it. You, if you don't plan it, I mean a comedian plans it, mm -hmm. the district attorney plans it, right. the prosecutor plans it, everybody plans it. Mm -hmm. They may be doing it internally and not thinking about it, but it's often better to give some thought and in intention to your attention mm -hmm. and therefore be more direct and more firing at right. your audience to get the benefit you want. Right. Okay. You, you know, going through a lot of your stories, you talked about failures as well. Now, right. um, I want to put you on the spot. If you can specifically cite a story of failure and, you know, because obviously this makes you look back and, and it gives you insights that eventually makes you succeed. So, what, top of mind, what's, what's one of your favorite failure stories that you've learned a lot from? You know, I failed in every single thing I've done. Everything. Every okay. single thing I've done and, and usually a couple of times sometimes. Not over and over mm -hmm. because I always looked at the failure as a tool and a resource for my further growth. Okay. Um, and statistically, you're bound to fail if you really take chances. In fact, if you don't fail enough, you're really not taking enough chances to see how good you are. Mm -hmm. So every business I failed in, every kind of business I failed in, I, I, I think that, um, you know, you, you look at sports, I failed at getting the three biggest teams in the world. I worked on it, got very, very close, and thought it was all over. Mm -hmm. you know, I had the Lakers and the Kings, I went to buy them. I had the Oakland A's, I went to buy them. I went to buy a, a big football team. And all of them I failed at. I failed at getting them. I misread the marketplace, mm -hmm. misread my competition, misread my alliances, undercalculated the kind of capital I needed for it, didn't fully understand the journey. And so I had no roadmap and no direction, and I was flying blind. Mm -hmm. And so I failed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I brought that failure as a lesson for me and, and recalibrated and tried it in a different way again later. Mm -hmm. So I don't look at 
failure as the end of the road. I look yeah. at it as part of the process mm -hmm. in trying to do things that are challenging and difficult. Mm -hmm.